Well, good evening, Northgate family and all the friends of Northgate. Thanks again for joining us tonight uh, as we continue in the book of Romans. We're going to be looking at Romans, the first 20 verses of, of Romans chapter 3. But I want to go back a couple verses in chapter 2 to kind of bring us up to speed where we're going to go into uh, Romans chapter 3 here. Verse 28 said, For you are not a true Jew. This Again, this is Paul speaking to the Romans there. You are not a true Jew just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the ceremony of circumcision. Remember, we talked a lot about circumcision last week. No, a true Jew is one. Now get this. Listen to what Paul's saying. A true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. It's not about circumcision. A true Jew is one whose heart is is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart. So it's all about the heart that is produced by God's Spirit. And a person with a change with a changed heart, he seeks praise from God and not from people. Okay? So that kind of brings us up here to, to uh, chapter 3. So Paul says... And we'll, let's go through verses 1 through 4 here. Paul says, Then what's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value in the ceremony of circumcision? Yes, there are great benefits. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of God. True, some of them were, were unfaithful. But just because they were unfaithful, does that mean that God will be unfaithful? Of course not. Even if everyone else is a liar... God is true, and the scriptures, uh, uh, as scriptures say about him, you will be proved right on the. Uh, you will be proved right in what you say, and you will win your case in court. So, what's happening here in the verse first four verses here? Paul is imagining that some of the Jews are protesting uh, Paul's thoughts. So Paul's kind of thinking, I'll bet they're thinking this, because he's heard enough uh, throughout conversation, you know, about the Romans. He, he knows kind of what they're thinking, okay? So he's imagining that they're protesting his thoughts. And if Paul's, if Paul's thoughts were right about circumcision, then it was unnecessary. It was un absolutely unnecessary. In verse 2, Paul says that he was proud to be a Jew. That's why he answered, yeah, there's many advantages to being a Jew. That's just saying Paul's, That's just saying from Paul that he is proud that he's a Jew. He spoke about the honor of God, uh, the honor, the, uh, and the honor that God had given to the Jews. That God entrusted the Jews with all of his messages. While, while they're out there in the, in the wilderness and, and uh, for 40 years and God appears to them and God, God gives them the protection that they need. He covers them with clouds for the heat. He gives, them, he gives them fire clouds at night to keep them warm. He feeds them out there. He, he also gave them the Ten Commandments while they were out there. And so there's, you know, they have, they have all these laws and so... Uh, God entrusted the Jews with all of his messages. So God wanted to use the Jews to benefit the entire world. That was his intent. Uh, to, to prove that, let's go back to Genesis chapter 12. I want us to look at uh, Genesis 12, 2 and 3. And God's speaking to Abraham here. I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. And I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And, uh, and those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Also, uh, as I said, God was speaking to Abraham right there. The promise to Abraham that God was going to use his people, his, his law, his commandments to bless the people of the world. God wanted to use the Jews to show the rest of the world exactly what God was like. He was using the Jewish people to show the world that God was good. He was kind. He was, he, his spirit 
would lead them. God, God wanted to use the Jewish people uh, to show the rest of the world that. Now in verse 3, there were some Jews that, Paul says, that did not obey the covenant. And they, they did not remain loyal to God. But just because, Paul says, just because they were unfaithful, God still is faithful. God still does everything that he promises to do. They may have been unfaithful, but God is never unfaithful. In verse 4, Paul emphasized that God's, God's promises are, are, are for certain. They're for real. God's promises are for real. His words are always true. Even if every person in the, even if every person in the world is telling lies, um, uh, not God. God is true. In Psalms 116.11, it, it simply says that all men tell lies. All men tell lies. So uh, let, let's go on over to verses 5 and 6. Let's drop down here. Um, Paul says, but some might say our sinfulness serves a good purpose, for it helps people see how righteous God is. It isn't... It isn't uh, isn't it unfair then, they're saying, for him to punish us? Uh, this is merely a human viewpoint, it says. But of course not, Paul says. If God, were un if God were entirely fair, how would he be, uh, if God were not entirely fair, how would he be qualified to judge the world? So, th this, is, this is a little twisted in their thinking here. Uh, Paul says that if people did not sin, that might not uh, that might not it, it may not appreciate they may not appreciate God's goodness, and so this is what the people were thinking. So he says that some might even argue uh, that even their evil disease, even even their evil deeds uh, gave honor to God. Do you hear that? Even their evil deeds might even be giving honor to God. And they say then that God is, is not fair to punish people for their evil deeds. So Paul says, that might be a clever argument for you, but you're wrong. Those who say such things are simply foolish, he says. They are speaking as if God were a mere man. So basically what they're saying, okay, so if we're all sinful, and this is what Paul's trying to bring out to them, if we're all sinful, then and if God's that good, maybe we're doing God a favor by being sinful so that the people can see that God is good. Uh, but the, the, here's the thing. God is perfect. God is never unfair. I think that Paul was sorry that, uh, that he even had to bring up or mention this idea. The truth is, God is going to judge every human sin. And the judge of the world is going to do what is right. God is our judge, and he will do what is right. Verses 7 and 8. But someone might still argue, how can God condemn me, condemn me as a sinner if my dishonesty highlights his truthfulness and brings glory to him? So, and, and, and some people even even slander us by claiming that we say uh, what we that we say the more we sin the better it is. Those who say such things deserve condemnation, deserve to be condemned. So Paul says some may even are some some of you are even trying to argue this. God ought to be grateful when people tell lies. The lies show that God is faithful as a result of his glory and, um, and his glory becomes greater. So, like I say, they're, they're a little twisted in their thinking. So it wouldn't be fair for God to call these people guilty. I mean, what people will not do to, justi to justify their sin? Everyone's trying to justify their sin. These people, in their twisted way of thinking, were saying, well, the more we sin, the better, the better God gets to display his glory. See, in a sense, they knew that God is a forgiving God, but this doesn't give you license to keep sinning, to keep telling lies, to keep doing wrong. And um, they, were, they, they were kind of saying, see, we're making God look good by our sinning. Many of Paul's enemies 
were saying that Paul was actually even teaching this kind of doctrine. And, he, and of course, he was not. So Paul goes on to explain to the, to, to the Christians in Rome that this is not true. I'm not, I'm not saying those things. It's the people that are saying those things. And it's the people who are trying to tr twist the truth of what Paul is saying. The truth is, Paul, Paul wasn't doing these things, you know, uh, wasn't teaching these things. The truth is, God knows about Paul's good work. And he knows what Paul uh, uh, was teaching and, he, and, and God put his stamp of approval on the things that Paul taught. Secondly, Paul says here, and uh, we'll, we'll begin with uh, verse 9 in a moment. Paul says here that everyone has sinned. Everyone has sinned. He's, he's making this clear because we're getting to, and we'll do it next week, but we're getting to one of the greatest verses in the Bible for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We'll talk about that next week. But Paul here is saying all people are sinners. Everyone has sinned. Now, Paul said back in verse 1 as we read it that the Jews had advantages, okay? But now he says but they're not better than the Gentiles. They may have advantages, but they're not better than the Gentiles. When it comes to, when it comes to salvation, uh, a, a, a Jewish person and a Gentile person, they're on the same level. They're, on the, they're at the same wavelength. They can, they, they can, they can both receive Jesus and, and have their sins forgiven. Um, the Jews did not realize that God's judgment was on them also. And that God would not show, uh, God would not show His kindness to one group more than another. He loved the Gentiles as much as He loved the Jewish people. He said, "Yes, the Jewish people they were given they were given the message, the messages I should say of God, and and God was using the Jewish people to promote His goodness and His love to the entire world. But it doesn't mean that they were better." See, this is the problem that the Jews had. They, they actually felt like they were better than anybody else. So Paul says basically uh, they were under the power of sin, as it says in, in verse 9. I, wanna, I want us to go ahead and read uh, verses, uh, uh, verses 9 through, let's, let's read verses 9 through 20, and then we'll come back and talk about them. Verse 9. Well then, should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all. For we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. Remember that, under the power of sin. And the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise, no one is, because no one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good. Not a single one. Their, their talk is foul, just like the stench from an open, open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom, venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. They, the destruction and misery always follows them. The, they don't they don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. So obviously, in verse 19, it says, The law applies to those whom it was given, for, it is the per for, it is, for, for its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. No one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. So let's go back and capture some of this. Beginning, uh, beginning with that phrase, under the power of sin, it means that sin was like a master uh, who had complete control over their slaves. For everyone, both Jews and Gentiles, there's, they're like slaves because of the power of sin. How many know, and I'm, I'm sure you're probably shaking your head, you know sin has power uh, over us when we allow it to enter into our lives. When we, when we uh, coddle it, when we, uh, when we invite it someday, sin has power over our lives. And this is what Paul is saying. In verses 10 through 18, Paul uses verses from the Old Testament uh, to show how wicked people can be. 
those verses, they were put together in a way that Jewish teachers, after a while, started calling them, <coughs> excuse me, strings of precious stones. They, they believed in what Paul was saying. Paul wanted to emphasize that sin controls everybody. So he continues to repeat the words, for instance, the word all. Uh, he also repeats the words nobody. He also repeats the words not even one person in, in, those, in those scriptures that we read. In verses 10 and 12, they're actually taken from the book of Ecclesiastes. In uh, Ecclesiastes 70, uh, I mean 7 uh, uh, verse 20 and then Psalms 14.3. Let's go there. Ecclesiastes, we'll go there first, chapter 7, I'll get there, uh, starting with verse 20, here's, here's what the, the writer of Ecclesiastes says, not a single person on earth is always good and never sins. In Psalms, in Psalms 13, uh, I'm sorry, verse, uh, uh, Psalms 14, verses uh, 1 through 3, it says, Only fools say in their hearts that there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone is seeking God. But no, all have turned away and all have become corrupt. No one does good, not a single one. So you see, Paul's even pulling from the Old Testament, the scriptures that many of these people knew, and he's reminding them uh, about the nature of sin. And so sin is a result of actions that are taken against God. We know that. No one looks to God to, to, to see what God is like. No one cares about what God wants. They have all turned away from God. They've turned, they've turned from the right way to live, and uh, that is why people sin. You've heard me say this before. I heard Ron Mel say it you know, 25 years ago. He says, uh, sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll, it'll, it'll keep you longer than you want to stay, and it'll cost you more than you want to pay. That's what sin does. So Paul is emphasizing here, that no no one you may be a Jew you may be you may be one who follows all the laws but what you need is to have a relationship with Jesus and once you once you do that you you're no better than anybody else and so but once you do do that you become a member of God's family and and you're in his kingdom these sins are that that Paul has mentioned here these sins are a result of people using their throat, their mouth, their tongue, their lips in the wrong way. These, these, are, what the, these are what is called uh, uh, sins of speech. This is how people destroy other people with their words. So Paul is, Paul is talking to them uh, about how you speak and how you, how you hurt people with your words. Uh, they say your sins are a result of your, of your throat, your mouth, your tongue, your lips, and, uh, and by using them in the wrong way. In Psalms uh, chapter 5, verse 9, and also in chapter 10, verse 7, um, and also again in, in uh, chap, uh, chapter 140, verse 3, it talks about people who tell lies. We won't take time to go through all those, but um, in Psalms, the, the writer of Psalms, David here, he talks about people who tell lies. Their words, he says, they said they are like poison and they can destroy people's happiness and they can destroy the character of a person. So, you may have had that happen to you. You may have had people speak words to you or about you that, that has caused you to feel uh, decimated or destroyed in your own spirit. And, and the psalmist is saying those, those types of things, those words that we speak can, can really uh, have an effect on people's lives and their character. It can ruin them. In verses uh, 15 through 17 here of, of chapter um, of chapter three, I want us, I want us to read that um, 
Well, actually, we, we read it. Paul says that evil actions are a result of words, okay? Um, James chapter 3, 5, and 6. Let's go there. James chapter 3. It says, in the same way, James says, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire, and the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole, uh, it is a whole world of darkness uh, corrupting your entire body. It can, it can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. And so we know where wrong words, evil words come from. They come from the pit of hell. And, and James says, be careful how you speak. See, a lot of people are quick to attack. They're quick to want to hurt other people. Uh, they're, uh, here, here in this chapter 3, it says they, they even go so far as to want to kill them. Say things like, I'll, I'll kill you or I'll, I'll, have, I'll, I'll, I'll do this to you or do that to you. They don't strive for peace. These are not people who strive for peace. People who, people who have foul mouths and they, 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 they speak against other people. They're, they're not the type of people that are striving for peace. And uh, Paul here is saying that's what we need to strive for. We need to strive for peace uh, because otherwise it'll cause trouble everywhere they go. See, an injury may hurt a person at first, but sinful behavior... Sinful behavior will damage the rest of society. And so it starts with how we speak because we think about those things and we speak those things out. If we're not talking about peace, then Paul says here they're talking about evil things, evil, evil ways of how you speak to people. And eventually that can damage an entire society. Verse 18. It says that they have no fear of God at all. Uh, Paul repeats this from, from verse 11. He says, all sin is against God. All sin is against God. Uh, Psalms, Psalms chapter 36 verse 1 speaks about a man who has no fear of God. And that sin comes from people's lack of honoring God, the God who created them. So they're not... You know, they, they could care less about, uh, about a God who created them, a God who gave them everything uh, because he delighted in them. And so they're not even thinking about God. They, they, their, their thoughts aren't towards God. Their thoughts are for speaking evil. Verses 19 and 20. Um, let, let's go there and, and finish this up. Obviously, the, laws applies, the law applies to, them, to those whom it was given for its purpose is to keep people from from having excuses and to show the entire world uh, is guilty before God. No one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. Now, some Jews, they would think that these verses are about the wicked Gentiles. Because remember, I've told you before, the Jews felt like they were so much better than the Gentiles. The Jews felt like they were God's people and God's children, and they were. But God was using them to show how good God is. But, but when they started living uh, 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 lives of evil, you know, they have forfeited that. They don't even want to talk about God anymore because be, they, they felt they were much better than the Gentiles because the Gentiles didn't have the law like they had. But Paul exp explains here that the law cannot make people righteous. It's not the law that makes people righteous, he says. Um, that was not the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law was to show the meaning of sin to people. That's, that was what the purpose of the, the law proves that everyone is guilty. And this is, what, this is what the Apostle Paul is trying to explain here. So the Jews, they can't become righteous by way of J Jewish ceremonies. They can't become righteous, for example, by circumcision. They can't become righteous just because they obey the Sabbath. They can't become righteous just because they obey their food laws. They had a lot of food laws. But that's not what makes you righteous, is what Paul's saying to them. 
Nobody can become righteous by means of their own good works. You can follow all the rules and laws, but if your heart is not right with God, um, you're allowing then sin to control every, your, your whole life. And so and Paul, is, Paul is laying down the law here. He's talking about that all people are sinners and that, um, but God always remains faithful. Amen? God always remains faithful. Remember, nobody can become, nobody become, can become righteous by their own good works. It's not, it's, it's, not by, it's not by works, but it's by the righteousness of God through his son Jesus that we are born again and bound for heaven. Amen? Well, God bless you. We'll, we'll uh, hope to see you this week, this weekend. And I know it's the holiday weekend, but man, if you can come by on Sunday, we'll be there and we'll worship and hear the word of God. So uh, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.